And we are, as a people, inherently and historically Wake up. opposed to the secret societies, the secret, secret oath, and the secret proceedings. The show that asks questions about why we don't ask questions. What the hell is going on? This is Conspiracy Queries with Alan Park. And welcome back. I wonder if you just downloaded the previous episode and you can't wait to get to the rest of what Tommy Hansen was saying. I wonder. Um, It's pretty interesting stuff. He did leave us hanging, though, and I'm going to continue to leave us hanging for a few minutes because uh, I have some more 9-11-themed information. Um, It's just a huge topic that's never going to go away. If you think about President Kennedy getting shot 50 years ago and we still haven't waded our way through all of the relevant facts and details to come up with an absolute bona fide conclusion, this is going to this is going to take longer even though we have a uh, more rapid and available stream of information uh because of the internet which they're hopefully not going to shut down, who knows what they're going to do there. There's already great resistance uh, in all kinds of public and private quarters about the throttling of the internet. That'll be a a topic for another show and uh, not for this show, although he may get into it himself, Tommy, I'm not sure. Um, Yeah, so let's, uh, let's move along to something a little bit lighter. Well, it's not really lighter at all. It's horrendous, actually, is the... uh, situation in England. Let's go to England and leave 9-11 behind for a moment. In England, uh, the uh, admittedly, (laughs) not exactly uh, the paragon of journalism, the Daily Star, it's nice if you like to see scantily clad women in silly contests, but they claim in their, uh, it's not even a newspaper anymore, I don't think, Perhaps it is. Uh, But there you go. They publish it all the time. There's all kinds of great information on Coronation Street if you need to get your fix. But uh, they have concluded uh, that a top-level cover-up was ordered to hide close links between Prince Charles and the pedophile Jimmy Savile. Now, when they say they have close links between them, I don't know if that means uh, sausage links, or what the level of involvement that the the good Prince Charles had. It was well known that they were friends for a long time. And so the question arises, how much did Prince Charles know about Jimmy Savile's pedophile activities? I don't know the answer to that question, but they were friends. They'd known each other for a long time. So how well do you know your friends, I suppose? is the question. Uh, Jimmy Savile was also able to dine quite regularly at uh, 10 Downing Street, the residence of the Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher. Uh, He was a mover and a shaker in uh, British society, and uh, no one really knew he was a pedophile until it was too late, until it was a year after he had died. But this is what the Daily Star claims to have uncovered. They say the full truth has been uncovered, following a seven-month battle by the Daily Star, where they were probably having spot-the-ball contests and pictures of stars on uh, The Only Way is Essex down at the beach with their bikinis on. What I'm saying here, it it isn't Time magazine. It doesn't have the gravitas. But it does have this story, and it is printing the story, and if they're afraid of any uh, repercussions legally... um, they probably wouldn't print the story and see what happens with the royal family uh, rebutting this story. I don't think they will. A raft of documents was released last year showing former Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher's dealings with Savile, but Whitehall, which I think is kind of like the um, the Pentagon of England, uh, Whitehall mandarins ordered key paragraphs to be blanked out to save people's blushes. So you can tell it's a a British publication right there when that's the way they phrase it. They don't want people to blush. 
Blushing's not on. Uh, we challenge that ruling. This is the Daily Star. Challenge that ruling under the Freedom of Information laws and were initially turned down. It was only after a further appeal when we said it was in the public interest to expose what Thatcher and her officials were discussing that the information was finally released. It shows Saville claimed Prince Charles had agreed to be a patron of one of his charities. And crucially, last year, someone in power had decided we shouldn't know that fact, despite it being common knowledge that the prince and weirdo Saville were pals. Officials at the National Archive, which houses the documents, last night... I guess before this was written, blamed the cabinet office under the control of cabinet secretary Sir Jeremy Haywood for redacting the documents. The cover-up concerned Saville asking Prince Charles to be patron of his Stoke Mandeville appeal. It goes on and on. So there is a solid link between um, the business and perhaps personal activities of rampant pedophile Jimmy Saville, who is really... Uh, talk about uh, not having a lot of credibility. The British Broadcasting Corporation, the BBC, world-renowned for being, um, you know, a bona fide news source, uh, other than reporting on the collapse of Building 7 in New York City uh, 25 minutes before it actually happened. Uh, but there you go. There's another uh, chink in their armor where they uh, they don't really have it together because th- they claim they had no idea that Jimmy Savile was doing these horrible things. And yet... Um, there are vast reports of uh, procurers of young things, young folks, uh, to be heading back into the room where Jimmy was. So that's what the that's that's who the prince knows. Uh, there you go. So all right. So that's uh, a little bit fresher in today's headlines. I'm going to move on now to uh, a gentleman. Uh, just the concept, really, of not being allowed to ask questions. We cannot ask questions, despite uh, a multitude of evidence that there would be good reason to ask those questions. And specifically right now, I'm going to turn to a gentleman. He was on the, he was on a morning show um, recently. And if you're listening to this last year or next year, then he was on a show last year. His name is Philip Mudd. He was uh, joined the CIA in 1985 as an analyst specializing in South Asia and then the Middle East. He began work in the CIA's counter-terrorist center in 1992. He served on the National Intelligence Council as Deputy National Intelligence Officer for the Near East and South Asia for the years 95 through 98. And after tour as an executive assistant in the front office of the agency's analytic arm, he went on to manage Iraq analysis at the CIA during 1999 to 2001. Oh, sure, I could go on with his credits. But let's just say he's a very uh, learned, obviously has access to uh, countless more uh, files of information than the average listener or myself, but well entrenched um, absolutely in, in what goes on and what happens in officialdom in the government. And uh, he was on a morning show uh, recently, and um, we're going to listen to him uh, refute a caller who has a very fair and salient question. And listen for the clue. He not only uh, bats the question away, but he pretends as though uh, the relevant plank in the question is not even there. So let's listen to that now. Andy is next. Vernon, New York. Good morning. Hi, thank you. Sure. Um, National Institute of Standards and Technology acknowledged that the World Trade Center Building 7 fell at free fall acceleration for over 100 feet on 9-11, which means it was meeting no resistance for eight stories. So sparing me a diatribe about conspiracy theories, can you please give me a straight answer on how you think that's scientifically possible without the use of explosives? Look, I think we should pass on this question. If you want to tell me that there's something going on beyond two planes going to the buildings, I never saw anything that suggested it. That was the most investigated event probably in FBI investigative history. So I've heard this comment that, you know, you'd need explosives inside the buildings to bring them down. I just, you know, I don't want to spend time on this question. I don't think it's valid. Thank you. And I agree. We've had that question posed many yep. times before. Hopefully uh, that will be the end of it. Uh, Robert is next. We take for... them all here. Bring them on. <laughs> no, we're happy to take the questions. That's, that's been coming up for the last I, 10 or 12 yeah, years. Yeah, and fine. Well, you've been hearing the conspiracy theories uh, on this for many years as well. And sometimes you have to scratch your head. 
Well, I'll go down to the coffee shop on Cooper Street here in, in uh, Memphis afterward, and hopefully nobody will notice I was on the show so I can have a cup of coffee and forget about the conspiracies. All right. Thank you, Philip. I appreciate that. Thanks for weighing in on that with uh, all the honesty and, uh, and depth of knowledge that you obviously have. He's, uh, there he is on C-SPAN's Washington Journal program, refusing to address a question. And the lackey little milk toast host they have on that show is uh, can't bend over fast enough to wipe up the mess that comes out of this guy's mouth. And, oh, no, I hate it when we have those questions. Those questions have been persisting for 10 or 12 years now. And it's just terrible because the question hasn't been answered. And there wasn't a plane that crashed into Building 7. Yes, everyone saw two planes crashing into the towers. No one saw a plane crashing into Building 7 because a Building 7 was not the recipient of any kind of plane attack. The guy states that in his call and tries to... He's obviously called in before. He's trying to preface this with, please don't brush this aside as conspiracy theory. Let's not get into that diatribe. I am presenting to you evidence that NIST, this is government-created evidence, the National Institute of... uh, Science and Technology's report. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is what NIST put out as fact, that the building collapsed at that speed. And there was no plane. So he's saying, just comment on that. Can you do that? And he just bats it away and goes on to explain how he hopes no one will bother him at the coffee shop when he leaves the studio. All right. But obviously the guy asking the question was insane. Here's a little something that came out last year and um, in Salon. This is another mainstream publication. This is from 2012. New NSA documents contradict 9-11 claims. Specifically, over 120 CIA documents concerning 9-11, Osama bin Laden, and counterterrorism were published for the first time, having been newly declassified and released to the National Security Archive. The documents were released after the NSA poured through the footnotes of the 9-11 Commission and sent Freedom of Information requests, Freedom of Information Act requests. The material contains much new information about the hunt before and after for bin Laden, the development of the drone campaign in AFPAC. AFPAC is uh, the... the, uh, the the little phrase they use for Afghanistan, Pakistan, it's not a insurance company, and Al-Qaeda's relationship with America's ally, Pakistan. Perhaps most damning are the documents showing the CIA had bin Laden in its crosshairs a full year before 9-11, but didn't get the funding from the Bush administration White House, who, like a pinhead, has put himself on the record, George Bush has, as... No one knew this could happen. We weren't aware they could fly planes into buildings, and that's complete nonsense. They even came up with that plan themselves in the 60s under Operation Northwoods when they presented that plan to President Kennedy, who decided, no, I don't want to attack Americans using planes that are painted up as though they were Soviet and crash them into buildings and kill people here so that we can blame it on the Cubans and invade, you'll have to come up with something else. Enter the Bay of Pigs and eventually Kennedy's death. I got off on an angle there, but basically Bush claimed they had no knowledge of this. They actively shut down research and information that was available before the alleged attacks. Now, again, I'm not getting into on this show. There's no time, folks. I wish we could, but I just don't have the time. Whether or not bin Laden was involved and in what capacity bin Laden was involved. The FBI has blocked a 9-11 whistleblower's book. A lawyer for Sibel Edmonds, who worked for the uh, FBI, trying to put the straight story forward, That's been all shut down. They are not going to let her put that book out. She'll probably get some version of it out that's heavily redacted, but she was a contract linguist at the Bureau, and she was fired after complaining to the FBI managers about 
shoddy wiretap translations and alleging that an interpreter with a relative at the foreign embassy might have compromised national security by blocking translations in some cases and notifying targets of FBI surveillance. This is an article on 9-11 Truth News, heavily discredited by folks that absolutely refuse to talk about 9-11 whatsoever, such as the Huffington Post, who have gone on record and on television saying, we are not going to entertain anything of that nature. Uh, we, we've had some people talking about it before, but we're done with that. It's over. Really professional. The attorney for Sibel Edmonds, <clears throat> Stephen Cohn, said his client's book, Classified Woman, the Sibel Edmonds Story, contains no classified information, yet has been under review by the Bureau for the past year. Bureau regulations promise reviews will take only 30 working days. So they're wrong there. And the latest <clears throat> update from the National Whistle, Whistleblower, Whistle, Whistleblowers Center in Washington, D.C., uh, from April of 2012, it says that they have revealed the FBI required employees to sign employment contracts that are illegal under federal law. Further to the point, uh, this is from the so many good stories come in from The Guardian. I don't understand why that is. It's just so much better than the North American press most of the time. The uh, U.S. acted to conceal evidence of intelligence failure before 9-11. But when you elect George Bush to be your president, you're not really concealing intelligence failure. You're putting it up on a pedestal. But in any case, Operation Fox Den was delayed by a turf war between the FBI and the CIA, given green light three days before the Al-Qaeda attacks. Operation Fox Den a sort of a merger between FBI and CIA. The U.S. government shut down a series of court cases arising from a multi-million pound business dispute. Can we put dollars in there? Can we? Do we have to say pound? I guess because it's a British publication. But if you got multi-million pounds, you got multi-million dollars. Anyway, they were... Uh, they tried to conceal the evidence of a damning intelligence failure shortly before the 9-11 attacks, MPs in Britain were told. Moreover, the UK government is now seeking similar powers that could be used to prevent evidence of illegal acts. What the hell is going on? And embarrassing failures. They're trying to prevent evidence of illegal acts and embarrassing failures from emerging in court. This is called changing history. This is called you're lying and you're crooked and you want to erase it. There's so much evidence of this in mainstream publications. The Justice and Security Green Paper being put forward by Ken Clark's Justice Ministry, this is in England, remember, has already faced widespread criticism from civil rights groups, media representatives and lawyers working within the secret tribunal system that hears terrorism-related immigration cases. In any case, more cover-up. More scandally cover-up. Yeah, and now Obama has, um, and this is hot off the presses, this is from Global Research, in a brazen and illegal attack on press freedom, the Obama Justice Department secretly subpoenaed the telephone records of Associated Press editors and journalists and tracked ingoing and outgoing calls on at least 20 telephone lines. This is all the stuff that George Bush used to sort of kind of get into, that while Obama was campaigning, deplored as horrible and not the kind of place everyone wants to live in. But he's ramped it up. Because he's not really the guy, is he? He's not really. It won't matter who replaces him. It just goes on and on. The agenda is the same. Different faces on the same corporate agenda. More of that. That's fantastic. That's why we have the internet. Hopefully we're going to be um, able to keep that. Now a 9-11 conspiracy theorist has been removed from a UN panel. We can't have that. <clears throat> we, can't have the, we can't have that going on. We can't have somebody who suspects the official story involved in an official capacity. So the B'nai B'rith has asked to have this person removed. This person being a former MI5 intelligence officer who says that the 11, 2011, uh, 2001, sorry, 
Terrorist attacks were orchestrated by the U.S. government as a pretext for war and to erode our freedom. Seems like we've established the pretext for war and had our freedoms eroded. It's kind of hard to disagree with that point of view. And um, as well, the thrust lately uh, that's been reported in several different areas of the mainstream media doing the best they can to deem something a conspiracy theory, which automatically puts it in the nut file. And then we don't have to think about it anymore. But there are some questions. More questions by the day. How about what happened at Ground Zero with widespread cancer in the responders, the molten steel that lasted from September 11th until deep into December, melted cars, Beams hurled hundreds of feet, hundreds of feet against the uh, what would be the natural gravitational pull of something that was just falling. Rapidly disintegrating beams of steel disappearing like hairspray, suggesting some kind of nuclear component or what have you. There are so many different questions, and at the same time, we have graphic mainstream evidence of the government doing everything it can to not have embarrassing things that might cause blushes, as the Brits would say, to take place. Well, I think it's more important to get to the facts. And I know Tommy wants to get to the facts. I left Tommy's interview. He, he was getting on to, uh, to some pretty good points about heat from the fire, perhaps igniting the thermite could easily have been painted on the beams of the 9-11 attacked buildings, the Twin Towers. And he said he had two more points, and I cut us off there. That was kind of mean of me, but we ran out of time, just like we're doing right now. So now I'm going to throw it back to Tommy and let him explain which two more interesting things he had on his mind. Stick around. That was what happened when the two planes got in and the fire started. The, uh, this fly, the, the heat from the fire would have made the nanothermite ignite. So, so that's a plausible scenario for the breakdown of the buildings, which, which obviously wasn't a collapse. And um, it also would explain two other things, uh, namely the molten iron and the existence of iron spheres in the dust. Uh, have you heard about the uh, the iron spheres from, from the uh, Deutsche Bank uh, report? Yes, the perfectly spherical, identically sized, uh, which is apparently an, a byproduct of, of using that technology. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and um, funny enough, it, 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 it wasn't even, it wasn't conspiracy theorists or anything that, that proved this. It was the fact that, that Deutsche Bank had a lawsuit against the World Trade Center in order to get, um, um, uh, how do you say it, in order to get uh, a payment for, for the damage on 9-11. So they had to prove that the building that was damaged actually was damaged from the dust from the World Trade Center. That's why they had to hire a very large uh, engineering company to analyze this dust. And in this report, you find the evidence of the uh, iron spheres which can only uh, occur if you have had very, very high temperatures to 3,000 degrees for uh, quite a amount of time. So what happened at the end for Deutsche Bank? Were they compensated or what yeah, happened? Yeah. They, yeah, were. they were. Yeah, they were. And, uh, and the building was, was rebuilt. And uh, yes, yes. Unbelievable. Okay, now taking that kind of uh, chicanery, we could talk about a 9-11 all day. Uh, yeah. all week, all year, <laughs> but there's so much to, to look at there. But are you familiar at all with the uh, the Boston Marathon bombing scenario? Well, I, I am, I am, I am familiar with it, but, but, but uh, I, I don't shout, I don't shout false flag uh, operation every time I see, uh, I hear a boom somewhere, but uh, the, the, it's it's my feeling that it gets more and more suspicious suspicious what's happening around around the the world these kinds of of, of, of terror events i mean take a look at history um operation gladio was a nato 
operation. During the Cold War, in all, in every European country, during the Cold War, up till nine, 1992 at least, NATO had a, um, a, a secret force of, um, of uh, terrorists, um, right-wingers and, and, um, and very suspicious people. And, and I mean, and, uh, uh, the former uh, Italian president Andreotti, Andreotti he, um, he exposed uh, Operation uh, Gladio as being behind the bombs in Bologna in uh, way back was that. And ever since then, we have had a history of terror events um, that, that can be connected to some sort of official uh, organization. Um, I mean, <laughs> you also you, you you could you could look at at the, the, the again again you could look at the CIA history. Um, it is literally full of of obvious planned false flag operations, and and that's what they've been doing, and and that and they did it with uh, with with uh, every every um, how, how do you say. Uh, that's that's what they've been doing for years, with the political uh, um, support. Yeah, support yeah. Well, some people here are are uh, saying here. I say I'm in Canada, but in North America, in the United States in particular, that that they are sniffing out that there might have been some kind of uh, false flag operation when you have. Um, the Richard Delorier, who's the special agent in charge of the Boston bombing, um, saying things like, uh, don't look at any of the photographs that people are taking. Just look at this handful that we're saying are OK. Don't don't look at anything else. And then you see in these other photographs that you're not supposed to look at that there were these um, um, similarly dressed operatives i could i could say they're wearing tan boots and tan yeah. slacks and they're wearing backpacks and one of them has been photographed wearing the same kind of backpack uh, which was then later shown as the culprit backpack that had the the bomb in it with a, a little white square on the top and there's just too many uh, stories as to what's going on here and when they start to tell you to narrow the scope of your investigation that's when my back really goes up yeah right, but of course, of course, it's not. It's it's not. Um, it's this is not a democratic operation, um, and you you have to you have to you have to see it this way. I think, um, in in the Boston bombings, um, probably the authorities had planned a terror drill, and that's okay. They're, that's what they are there for. So, um, uh, I mean, everybody know that there was a terror drill going on uh, at the end of the uh, of the race, I suppose, uh, and that's that's out of the box. So that's uh, that's common knowledge now. Yeah, several of the runners had said so. Yeah, they had yeah. seen it. So, and... so, so that's that's okay. That's uh, that's what they do, and they they uh, they uh, they take this big event and make a tra- terror drill um, at the same time. That's that's no problem with me. But what if what if what if there really existed a, a sort of dark forces, a sort of uh, 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 dark forces in the CIA or any other organization? And what if they hired some Blackwater-looking uh, uh, group of five, ten people, whatever is needed, and a couple of actors uh, to join the, the game? The, the the good guys would never know what happened to them. So uh, in in this scenario, it only it only takes it only takes a very few handful of trained men to make any kind of uh, terror event like this, and that is what we see over and over again. And then we see that they apparently arrested a Saudi national. <laughs> then they yeah. denied it. And apparently in some of the press, Michelle Obama went to visit this guy in the hospital before they then uh, shipped him out of the country, which they said they weren't going to do. Uh, Janet Napolitano said she wasn't going to do that. She had no idea what was going on with this. But then later on, he was uh, shipped out of the country, just like after 9-11 when, yeah. when those Saudi nationals were you know, exactly. when no no American could fly anywhere in a plane, and they just said, "Well, let's get these uh, Saudi people out of here, and then we'll start looking into it." 
that Bin Laden's good. But, uh, but also, also, I mean, uh, uh, on 9-11, uh, I think it was uh, uh, some, some, some in, in, in August uh, 2001, that one of the fly, uh, one of the alleged tidy, I guess, was um, was stopped by the U.S. Customs because uh, he was uh, wanted for terrorist uh, activities, and he was uh, withheld from from uh, by by the U.S. Customs until suddenly um, a message came from the FBI that he was uh, wanted as a, uh, that he was an important witness, so they uh, were told to let him go. And, yeah. and that, and uh, that's a fact. <laughs> and, uh, and and if you look at the hijackers on 9/11, it's it's clearly it's 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 incredible that you you could believe that they did anything at all. And some of them are still alive, apparently, and have complained yeah. about being. I, I mean, and there's no follow up on that. No, but that that's very that's very hard because uh, who who would know who is a uh, who uh, Muhammad somewhere uh, a picture of of someone that's very hard to to. Uh, to um, to prove. Well, I don't but, know. You might have an investigation to prove it. <laughs> you might, you yeah. might want to look into it sometime. But I mean, um, uh, another thing is uh, the so-called um, uh, flight. Uh, what is it called? A voice, a voice, pit, uh, a voice cockpit recorder. Um, Sorry, what was that? Cockpit voice recorder. Oh, right. Yeah, the black box, uh, the cockpit. Yeah. Uh, Yes, from these uh, transmissions on 9-11, you can hear these alleged hijackers uh, shouting Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar as the very last words. But but um, every Muslim knows that that is not what a Muslim is supposed to say when he's going to die. He is going, he has to say the, um, it's called the Sharia, I think. He has to use some a very different phrase but, but Allah Akbar is the only one that uh, American uh, listeners would, you know, and, and, understand. And the script writers at Hollywood or, or whoever wrote the right. script, that's what they know. Yeah. Where but, are where are the footage? Where is the footage of the Pentagon? Where is the footage of Logan Airport? Because when you go into an airport, even back then, before nine eleven, you're photographed getting out of the cab or whoever dropped you off in front of the airport. You're photographed when you stand in line waiting to get uh, your ticket or or to get through uh, the other side of security even back then you're photographed walking up and down you know going in and out of a snack shop you're photographed sitting in the waiting lounge before you get on the plane there should be an unbelievable amount of footage of these guys and we've never seen it and now i'm waiting for are we going to see the dash cam the dash camera footage from the police cruisers that were allegedly in a firefight with the Boston bombers, uh, the <laughs> suspects, but we don't get to see any of the, of that footage and, or no one even asks where it is. I mean, on nine 11, within 15 minutes after the Pentagon attack, uh, the FBI had confiscated almost 80 surveillance videos, 80 surveillance from, from the, where now, where were they from? From the surrounding area, in, in all, the, all all over the neighborhood, everything that could record, they confiscated. And uh, up till this day, they've only released uh, two of them, and then their own surveillance video, and the rest is still held. Um, it is closed because of national security. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. the official explanation because uh, of, of why they don't uh, publish or, or, or give back these uh, videotapes. They, they they don't because if they do, we'll see it wasn't uh, Boeing seventy seven, and and also if it should have been this Boeing seventy seven, just look at the scenario. Everybody knew America was under attack at, at, at this time. Everybody knew, everybody watched television or watched the sky. That, that's what probably what most of the Americans in this area did on that time. So why, how come that we don't have just one little tiny private video clip of this huge uh, passenger jet nearing, lowering into Washington, uh, Pentagon, into the, the area? I mean, uh, if, if you stand... Uh, uh, if you, if you stand by an airport, you, you see these huge mach, uh, machines. You can see them a minute before. And ju just out of these hundreds of thousands of Americans, not one 
has produced just one image of this uh, alleged... Uh, yeah, just the moment before impact videos in New yeah, York. That's yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. And that's because it was never there. Well, what, simple, so what was it, Tommy, then, if it wasn't an airplane that... I understand was, what you're saying. No one, no one shot a video of anything. So where did whatever it was come from? Yeah, it was uh, it, it was a missile, a missile of, of of some kind. I don't know the exact type, but but surely a missile. And it, and so a missile with like wings built onto it to resemble well, a plane. Uh, well, the A three Sky Warrior is the type of machine that could do the job. Uh, uh, some of the Hawk types could do the job. They, they have several, several uh, different types that could both match the characteristics of the speed and the maneuverability and everything. Uh, contradictory to uh, what a seventy seven seven fifty seven could do. So, what happened then to the passengers that? did apparently get on planes that day that were initially on radar screens before they weren't. And and uh, there were... Ni- well, uh, none of the planes was full, as I recall. No, uh, they were... Especially um, the passenger list on Flight 77 was um, quite remarkable because uh, I don't remember the exact uh, numbers, but I think it was uh, 30 or 40 percent of the passengers that had a high military clearance or a, a Pentagon connection or some kind of uh, CIA or, or FBI or, or whatever, um, 30 or 40 percent of them. And if that should have been, or rather, that could not be a normal uh, percentage. No, that that's that's to me very hard to to uh, to believe. So a high a high amount a high percentage of military uh, or or uh, intelligence connected people on those planes or, yeah, or just uh, on the one plane on seventy seven. No, at least at least on, on the Pentagon plane. That's uh, that's a fact. And the other two planes. I mean, what happened to those people? I, I haven't I haven't gone into details with the uh, with the um, uh, exact passengers, but but they were uh, all very low. Uh, that's that's a fact. They were very low. Uh, I think it was. Uh, I think someone has said that again at flight seventy seven that um, they have never never before flown an um, intercontinental uh, line with such low uh, passenger uh, numbers. On the manifest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But some people uh, claim, you know, the the victims' families, you know, their their dad died on that day, or the, you know, they've yeah. never seen him since. There are a lot of supposedly regular civilians that were killed on that flight, and many yeah. people speak of. There's a baseball player who was, or a, a manager. I'm sorry. Um, military personnel have had children too, so so yeah, yeah of course, yeah. So yeah. what happened to those people? Did they just pay them a couple of million bucks and then set them up on an island in the middle of the Pacific and live them in the lap of luxury, or you know what? No, oh. I'm, I'm I'm quite sure they're all dead because we also had their um, uh, teeth uh, and and dent- what what say dental uh, uh, information and everything. I, I think they're dead, but but um, I've read the documents on the uh, Operation Northwood. Uh, uh, and the fact that you can you can stage a terror event by killing some uh, uh, killing a number of, of, of people, um, it's not it's not a moral uh, border for 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 the people in power or for some of the people in power. Um, it, it's it's a terrible thought, but, but but you have to you have to address it because. When you first, if if you first realized that it could not have been Flight 77 that hit Pentagon, period, then you have to think, then what happened to the passengers? Um, the pilots for 9 Air and Truth have uh, compared a lot of uh, uh, flight data from uh, from the black boxes and from the uh, uh, NORAD and from the FDA and, and several others, and... Um, I don't remember exactly, but but uh, two of the planes uh, on 9/11, according to the uh, pilots for 9/11, truth, were in, in in were airborne after they allegedly crashed. And as far as I remember, uh, Flight 77 specifically were was airborne 20 minutes after it allegedly hit the Pentagon. Um, so. 
the last the last thing you know about uh, Flight 77, uh, according to the official version, is that it turned around um, some somewhere uh, over in in the desert, and then uh, head back headed back for New York. Uh, but I can tell you that on this uh, in this area where they um, where they turned around uh, is one of the major. Um, uh, Air, air stations, uh, how do you say, um, yeah, air bases for, for um, uh, U.S. military. So, of course, it could have landed there, and it could have been destroyed there, and the passengers could have been dying there. Okay, so with so many uh, theories, let me, let me just, I, we're going to have to come to the close of our time shortly, unfortunately, and hopefully you'll come back again. I'll, I'll be there. I'm speaking with Tommy Hansen. He's a investigative journalist based in Denmark, and uh, he's been helping us with uh, connections with 9-11 and um, other terror drills that take place on the same day as an actual terror event. I've been talking a little bit about the Boston Marathon situation and the ensuing chase of the alleged suspects. Uh, Tommy, one of the problems with conspiracy theories is the more time that goes by between the event taking place and getting somewhere, the murkier the waters become. We still don't really know what happened with John F. Kennedy, you know, and we're in the 50th anniversary of that now. This this year will be 50 years. We haven't figured that out. Now we're we're at the, the 12 year. Sorry, go ahead. We're getting close to that. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're getting close to that, but it, but it's 50 years, and, and, you know, come on. I mean, we need to find this stuff. We need to get to the bottom of this, and now you've got 9-11, which, you know, that's uh, in 2001, so it's 12 years ago, and there are a lot of theories. Now, a lot of the theories that you brought up are possible, and there are a lot of good theories, and there's the official story, and there may be some hybrid synthesis of, of several of these woven together. And I think the further we get away from the time that it initially happened is all the more chance for um, cover-up and obfuscation. Now, I want to bring something up personally to you, because this just happened in Canada uh, a couple of days ago, where... Uh, the police, this is a week after the Boston Marathon's uh, bombings. The police in Canada, uh, regional police force is in, in a sort of like a county area um, called Durham County, as well as our RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, as well as our uh, CIA equivalent, CSIS, the Canadian Security, whatever the hell they are, Security Investigation Services, were working in tandem, apparently, with the America's uh, Department of Homeland Security. And apparently there's been some kind of um, tracking uh, situation going on for the past couple of years or last year where they have satisfied themselves that two culprits, one from Montreal and one from Toronto, were busted on Monday. And this was a big press conference about how these two had planned to bomb... um, a train trestle, an overpass, some kind of railway bridge on our via rail. Uh, it's sort of a national train line that we have here. And they were, which is hilarious because they barely move ever. Anyway, if you've ever tried to catch a via rail, you spend most of your time sitting on the tracks, not moving at all. But uh, there goes my endorsement. But uh, they they um, caught these guys and they say they're investigating them and they're going to bring them to court. And there's this whole trial going on uh, soon, I suppose. And the hilarious part to me is they said they were both Al-Qaeda, and it's the first time anything has been uh, notably uh, an Al-Qaeda activity going on in Canada. And as well, they have ties with Iran. Now, we all know the drums of war are beating on Iran. So my question to you, Tommy, is I don't know if you've heard of this story or not. I tried to sum it up as briefly as possible. How can I and people who are fed up of being spoon-fed these ridiculous, uh, terrible, evil situations, if indeed that is what is happening. What kind of questions can I ask my officials? What can I do to to put my game a little bit above and beyond the spoon-fed pap that we're all getting out of the news, if, if I am right in surmising that there was really no 
danger there. This is just another thing to get uh, our government drummed up and excited about another terror bill, which once again restricts your freedoms, just like they've done in the States. And they're already debating that in the House of Commons right now. And this, this incident is only a few days old. What can I do? What, what tool can you give me from your journalistic bag of tricks that can help me and others listening uh, approach their uh, re- representatives to find out is this real uh, is this a real story or not and if it isn't who's behind it yeah well the next time they throw al qaeda at you you could uh, you could uh, ask you could t- say, say to them that uh, oh you mean the organization that brzezinski says cia founded um it it's only two weeks ago i think a new french book um where, with an interview with sick uh, sick uh, what's he called it's a big new is a big new brzezinski a uh, uh, terrible name sorry <laughs> um, but but he's he has openly admitted that uh, the cia founded the al qaeda and it was done before uh, um, uh, six months before the soviet even invaded uh, afghanistan and the name al qaeda is the Arab word for the base, and it 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 came from it's sort of a slang because uh, in the early uh, 80s um, Osama bin Laden was an, a CIA asset, and he uh, personally recruited about 30,000 uh, mujahideen soldiers to this uh, resistance movement against the Soviet Union that was controlled by the CIA. Those 30,000 names were tipped into a database in the Pakistani uh, intelligence uh, organization, which is, which, is like, uh, which is just like CIA. The ISI, uh, is that what? And, and, and sort of a slang. It was it was just it was it evolved as a sort of slang that oh we just check with the base we, what, what, how, how, what names do we have in, have in the base and the base is Al Qaeda so uh, and I mean Hillary Clinton uh, also admitted that uh, that that they have created exactly the problem that the, that they now have uh, they have they they armed a lot of um mujahideens and now they turned against them that's what's what what she said but but all in all uh, it's 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 not a theory that al qaeda is created by the cia that's a, that's a historical fact right okay well i will try to find someone to ask that question because it just feels to me like oh here we go again you know i i want to see if there was a a concurrent drill exercise going on. Obviously, these guys in Toronto here are are proclaiming their innocence, that they didn't really have anything to do with that. And I don't know if that's true or not. But boy, it just seems like it's happening faster and faster. People are still reeling about the Boston Marathon uh, deaths and tragedy. And before even a week has gone by, um, almost to the minute, actually, it was about three o'clock in the afternoon, uh, both times, this press conference uh, is released to the public's uh, con- for, for their consumption about this Al-Qaeda with Iranian connections. And that just, you know, they want to go to Iran. And, and we haven't been behind that idea at all as Canadians. We've not been interested in going there. Our government is. And now it seems like, uh, you know, they're all on board to help the Americans and Israel to get in there and, and do whatever they feel they need to do in Iran. Just like the mass destruction, the weapons of mass destruction in, uh, in Iraq. Sure. Still looking but, for those. But I'd like to get back to, to something you said uh, just, just a minute ago, because um, uh, the difference between the, uh, what we know about uh, John F. Kennedy today and, and what our children is going to know about 9-11 is that we live in, a, in, a, we live in the Internet time, and that's exactly what the system hasn't been able to cope with. Uh, in, up till now, we've lived in a world where uh, the story of the true story of uh, uh, Kennedy and the World War and everything is has only been published uh, by books and typically 20, 30, 40, 50 and, or 100 years after. So everybody involved has uh, have had a, a, a complete secure foundation to to go and, and and do it their way because they they they've always known nobody is ever going to know um but the internet has made a difference and what we're doing now uh, what we're seeing now is that we are we are experiencing experiencing 
history as it evolves. So that's the reason why that a lot of people know about 9-11. Uh, a lot of people know about the lies that led us to the Iraq war. A lot of people know about the illegal actions of the CIA all over the globe with abductions and torture and everything. A, a lot of people know a lot of things that they would never, ever have dreamed of knowing anything about without the Internet. So in, in a very few years, maybe starting tomorrow, the Internet as, as a media source will far be far, far bigger than the very, very tiny small old-fashioned news broadcast media and that's that's the, uh, the development you are pushing that's what i'm pushing that's what a lot of other people are pushing because at the end of the day it 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 only it only ha we, we only have to be interested in get the message out to the people and and actually i would like to say in in, in that uh, in that uh, respect that I've, I've made a new website um where i publish these stories on old-fashioned paper. It's uh, still only in, in, in Danish, but but the point is, a lot of a lot of people that are uh, familiar with the internet know a lot of things, and that's that's the basis of this. But to get to the people that don't even want to 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 go to the screen or don't even doesn't even know anything about anything, uh, internet-wise, you have to publish on paper. So I make modern PDF documents in a very old-fashioned, uh, quite readable way, and I put them on this website. Um, they, the, uh, the articles, the material is meant for free um, education purposes or whatever, uh, but when, when, you have, when you have some documentation in, you can take out into the real world and point at a picture, uh, point at a, at, a, at a sentence and say, it says so here. Well, so is the idea that I go to your website and I can print something up, you're saying? Or, or, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Well, what's but, the name of that website, Tommy? Uh, well, it's, it's a Danish, it's a, uh, mainly a Danish website. So the, uh, the international public uh, wouldn't uh, have any, um, have any joy of the, of the paper. Part well, we of like it. Danish cheese. I don't see why yeah. you can't just give us the website. Yes, of course, of course, and uh, and on the website there's a lot, lot of a lot of uh, English material, a lot of English. Videos. Well, speaking of the web, Tommy, a lot of times what I like to do is uh, if if the article that I'm looking at uh, doesn't have a translate button, I'll go to Google Translate and I'll drop it in there. I yeah. read. I, that's how I read French. We're supposed to be able to read French and English in Canada, but uh, that's not happening for me right now. But I, I drop it in there, and there there's grammatical problems and and little yeah, things. But you still get the general idea of what's going on. Well, it, well, it's called stickimo.dk, and, and you you can't spell that. Okay, can you it's, say that in English, please? Yeah. No, I'm just uh, kidding. Well, it, uh, just well, spell it out for us, though. Yeah, S-T-I-K-I-M-O-D dot D-K, stickimo.dk. I was on that website. It, 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 in fact, did have translation buttons on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. You're, You'll get, you'll get the point. Okay, so no, now, speaking of the Internet, though, and, and you're saying it's a great thing, and boy, isn't it? We, we love uh, the proliferation of things we can get there. There is a lot of garbage on it. There, are, there is a lot of misdirection. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Project Mockingbird. Uh, probably you are. And now we've got current er er efforts like CISPA and these other government attempts to choke down the free flow of information on the Internet that I assume is there strictly to bolster their point of view. What, what do you make of that in, uh, if we're going to rely on something that is constantly at a peril between these people uh, uh, taking it down or, or throttling it somehow? Well, it shows uh, clearly how desperate uh, how desperate the system is, um, because I, I, I don't think they'll ever be able to 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 take out the internet, so to speak, because that's against the nature of the the technical nature of the internet. There, there's no uh, there's no off button on the internet, so they can try this, they can try that, um, but but they won't. They I, I don't I don't think they'll get anywhere. Oh, that's great. I hope you're right about that. Yeah, but that, well, I, well, I have to be. But, but I mean, still, still, what we can do is we can speak what we think is the truth, and and the more people doing that, the more powerful the we are. Uh, 
I think it was David David Icke who said uh, some some time that uh, when the Roman Empire uh, collapsed, it w happened within uh, seventy years or something like that. Merely from the fact that all of a sudden the people found out that the Romans weren't gods at all; they've just been lied to. Right. And I mean, <laughs> that's that's where we stand now, the, and 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 we've been lied to. And, we've, and, we've been lied to by a, a lot of – it happens all the time. And, and you're familiar with Project Mockingbird, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with that one too. Um, I don't think it went away. You know, it was sort of talked about in the Senate hearings in the early 70s. It had been around for some time. It, it's admitted to. You can Google that up and look at it. I don't think it's gone away. I think maybe it's gotten better hidden over the years. It's like the CIA COINTEL Pro. I mean, they haven't gone away. They've just uh, changed the names. No, nothing has gone away. It's just uh, got a new name and, and uh, hidden in some some other organization. Yeah. So, so, but, but that's that's the, the modus operandi of the system. That's well, that's how they work. Well, I like the way you've uh, you've brought it to a close with a positive note. That is certainly something that. Uh, I, I hope it works for you. I hope you're able to get your publication out. I certainly will um, post that on the website, and and uh, people can check that when they listen to the show. Um, Tommy, you've been a wonderful guest. I wish you the best of luck in uh, in your employment needs and that your website takes off. It's a very good website. Don't be afraid of what Tommy says, folks. There's a, there's a lot of uh, uh, English stuff on there. You can read a lot of great information and just translate it from Danish to English. Um, or maybe take Danish lessons and read it in the, its original language. Tommy, uh, I'm glad you'll come back sometime. I'm sure we'll have more to talk about. You've been very generous with your time, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks, Tommy. It's interesting uh, listening to Tommy's voice. For me, I like accents. I would have guessed that he would have been Dutch if I didn't know he was Danish. But then again, the Danes, the Dutch... They all look alike. Hopefully we'll have uh, Tommy back on um, because there's some fascinating new indisputable development as opposed to more theorizing. Um, there's certainly room for that, though. There is an unbelievable uh, amount of topics within the 9-11 uh, situation that need to be brought forward. And as you listen to the beginning of the show, there's a lot of oppression heading in that direction of, of trying to get things out. People are trying to get information out and the government is doing what it can to shut things down. And we really have to prevent that from happening. So if you're a blogger or if you work at a mainstream publication and you don't mind losing your job like Tommy did, uh, do what you can to get that information out because uh, there's definitely a cloak over top of what is acceptable and not acceptable according to those holding the purse strings. Yeah, stick around next week when we won't be talking about 9-11. Thanks for listening to Conspiracy Queries with Alan Park on Sirius XM Channel 167, the show that asks questions about why we don't ask questions. We're trying to answer questions that matter and provide you with a perspective you won't hear in the mainstream. There's more going on out there than what we are being told. We're dropping a new show once a week every Friday on iTunes and accompanying that show on the website with the relevant contact names, YouTube links, and articles. That website is conspiracyqueries.com. On your smartphone, find conspiracyqueries at stitcher.com. Please offer feedback on Twitter at con underscore queries or at Alan Comic or at our website. Thanks for listening. <laughs>